welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be entering into a world of magic as we continue our process of painting up the playing pieces from Hero Quest. Now I've been distracted lately with painting up Dungeons and Dragons miniatures, so it's been quite a while since I've last tackled this. However, it's now time to go back to Hero Quest and paint up some more pieces. Today we're going to be taking a look at the bookshelves, because every self-respecting orc and goblin needs somewhere to store their books, so that they can have a quiet read in between smiting adventurers. The bookshelves really add some nice bulk to the board when it's all set up. They really give the dungeon some interesting ambience, so they're a nice piece to get in there. Most of the bookshelves are card, so there's not a lot to actually have to paint up. We've only really got the top pieces, but we've also got the rats and the skulls which sit on top of that. So, without further ado, let's get painting. First thing I'm going to do is lay down a layer of Rhinox hide. I've watered this down slightly so that it goes on nice and smooth and runs into the gaps. And I'm not being very careful with this. I'm just kind of slapping it on really no precision, just cover everything. Now, perhaps controversially, I've decided to go with a metal look for the detailing around the edges of the bookcase instead of wood. So for this, I'm laying down some brass scorpion. I'm not being too careful. I want to try to avoid the wooden part at the top, but if I get any on there, I can just paint over the top of it since nothing's blended yet uh, and that will cover it up really easily. I want to try to match the wood that's printed on the cardboard piece of the bookshelf so I'm starting to lay down some other colours. I'm using some dry brushing here with a quite an orangey brown and just going across the wood grain adding some orangey tones to that. With that orange tone in place I now want to add some red tones so using more of a reddish brown and again dry brushing. Most of the paint has been wiped off of my brush onto some newspaper so that it's only in highlighted areas that it's going to add on to the plastic. A little too red for my liking so this time back to the orangey brown and dry brushing a little bit more over the top of that just to give that overall orangey tone. I then want to weather down that metal so I'm doing a liberal coating of Agrax Earthshade over the top of everything, the metal and the wood. And that's just going to give some dark areas in the recesses of the patterns on the edges, make that stand out more. Once dry, the Agrax has dulled everything down a bit too much, so we're going to use some dry brushing again, this time with that brass scorpion over the top of the highlights to bring them out and to add some nice shine and colour to it. I want a little bit more of an orangey tone to the metal so I'm now dry brushing some bronze over the top of it. Just breaks it up a bit more, adds a bit more depth, a bit more interest to the colour. And finally a bit more brass scorpion dry brushed over the top just to take some of that oranginess down a little bit. Now the Agrax has darkened down and muted all of those wood colours, so it's time to go back and dry brush some more of that reddish brown on top, just to punch the colour back up again. And of course we're going to need a bit more of that orangey brown, so a bit more dry brushing. Once again, get that colour on there. I find with dry brushing that there's a lot of going back and forth with colours that you've already used before, just in order to get them to blend together nicely and to have them mottled and mixed well. And so once more dry brushing with the colour that we've already laid down, this time that reddish brown, and this will finish it off the wood and I'll be quite happy with that. It's easier to paint the skulls in a batch rather than one at a time, so here I've blue tacked them all down to an old Covid tester strip so that it's easier to paint and manipulate them. I'm painting an Agrax wash straight over the bare plastic and just making sure it doesn't pull too much, uh, spreading it out so that it doesn't get too dark in any areas. Once that's dry, I'm just going to use some Wraithbone and dry brush that on. Again, my brush has got very little paint on it and just highlighting those areas of the skull, making it stand out, getting a nice contrast between the raised parts and the deeper shadows. And then finally, just to add a little bit of pop to the colour, I'm using a straight bright white and dry brushing that on. But there's very little of that on my brush. I don't want to add too much of that because it will overpower everything. Skull's done and it's on to the rats. Again, using that handy Covid testing strip as a handle. 
painting the agrax here straight onto the bare plastic and that's going to go into all the crevices make them nice and dark it's then on to the dry brushing and here I'm just using a much lighter brown, this is Gorthor brown, and dry brushing that over the top of that Agrax stained plastic so that it's going to contrast nicely with that and bring out those details on all the rat's fur. For the parts of the rats where its fur is thinner and you can see more of its skin, I'm using dwarf flesh here, thinned down a little bit with water so that it's not so sharp on the edges. And I'm going to paint this onto its legs and feet, its ears, its tail and its nose. I find that the pink stands out quite a lot against the brown fur and doesn't seem to blend particularly well. So I'm using this thinned down dark brown in order to apply a wash over the top of it and that will tie everything together. I just want to make that skin a little bit brighter and pop more and I want to give it more of a pinky shade. So I'm using a very thinned down wash or glaze here of Emperor's Children. Very pinky but it makes it nice and stand out well. On to the details and for the teeth I'm using Flayed One Flesh which is a slightly off white tone. I don't like using straight white because it's too stark. This is a nice tone for the teeth and I'm just using a very fine brush tip to apply that. And then the final detail I'm painting in the eyes here with a very, very fine brush tip. I'm using some Evil Sun Scarlet in order to add that red to the rat's eyes just to make it nice and menacing. And there we have the finished painted rats. Now obviously only two of mine have got tails, the other four are missing them. So creating tails is going to be a job for another day. So now it's time to put everything together. I've got the skull on there already. Watching I don't snap the tail on the rat to add that. And then that top piece can then be put onto the cardboard piece of the bookshelf. And it's looking rather good. The top is a bit darker than the wood on the cardboard, but it will do. You'll also notice here that my two cupboards, I've actually done the surrounds on them in brown to replicate wood instead of metal like on my bookshelves. So I've got a mix of metal and wood on these shelving units and cupboards and I think that looks great. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to tell us how you get on with painting, please leave a message in the comments below. Or if you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please get in touch. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here and there's going to be plenty more of this coming up. Until next time though, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.